Hello, Vision Media. Subscribe now or you're killing yourself. Kill him, daddy, kill him. Kill him, daddy, kill him. To this thing on oh, our mercy, man. I just want to ask you a question, man. Like, explain your style, man. You, you got a big voice on it. Uh, I mean, a little bit before you. Your style is, you know, you actually with the influences, bro. Uh, like I said, well, I'm a kid of the golden era, a baby of the golden era. So, of course, being from New York and um, growing up listening to what we listen to. Rhyming wise, Rockin', Coochie Rabbit, Daddy King. That's what a, a lot of dudes would refer to as the Holy Trinity. But then you you had also had you know, elements of uh, early Karis One, which is you know street savvy dude, but then he had other content and then Public Enemy, just the theater of them having their own army. And so my favorite MCs was Rockin', Karis One, Rockin', King. Gucci rap for the mechanics of rhyming, and then uh, Chuck D and, and uh, Karis Long because they just had like that regular dude look to them, and you could see them going to the store, but then they would have just powerful shit to say. There will never really be justice on stolen land. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he would just all in the officer. Overseer, 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 overseer. He just was just one of them dudes, but he did everything. Right. So, you know, 
with that, I never knew I was gonna go on to be Lord have mercy, but like a lot of dudes, you rhyme, you know what I'm saying, something that's a good tradition, so you do it. But as I started to move into it, I always, you know, I can see now that I look at some of my old demos and I do things, it's always that responsibility to, to give my version of what, you know, information type rhyme. So I just make sure that what I do, man, can kind of go everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't make it where, you know, my style is supposed to be able to, if you could run on the radio, mm -hmm. then I could run on the radio after. If you could run into a cypher, then I'm gonna be able to run on the cypher after. Mm -hmm. Like when y'all see the, you know what I'm saying? I did the freestyle for y'all. Right. That's just bars. Right. That right. ain't fire, straight fire. You know what I'm saying? That's just not, <coughs> that's not, you know, put me anywhere else. But that's why I came up. I learned to rhyme first. Then when I started making little songs, I'm like, okay, well, okay, this could be the chorus. And then okay. I, you know, you started then, working on your style. Then as you, yeah, but your style, I think it also naturally developed because then it started to be other things that I wanted to do that wasn't them. Mm -hmm. So to really go into your question, when I got to a point where I started to be like, all right, I can do this. I picked eight people. I got an eight man council. So when I would make a record, I would play it in my head and I would play it for these eight people. So my five MCs, Rock Him, Kane, Uji Rap, Karis One, Chuck D, they would sit at the table, and then Bob Marley would sit at the table, Jimmy Hendrix would sit at the table, and Kurt Cobain would sit at the table. Rock Him, Uji Rap, Big Daddy Kane, they check in rhyme mechanics. Yeah, you went from this world to that world like this, this cool. Karis One, Chuck D, they check in my rebellion. Am I gonna say some shit that's gonna buck the system a certain way? Okay. <coughs> Bob Marley's gonna make sure that my rebellion is clean. I just know, being from Jamaica, I just know how roster dudes are. Like they don't, they not, when they buck against something, it's not with a bunch of resentment and hate towards somebody. They still wanna be on a love vibe, but you know, they just, you know, down with Babylon and that type of thing. Uh, Jimi Hendrix would push the sonic part of me. Like I would pick something different around one of the dudes would be like, how are you going around with that shit? Mm. But, like, the story of Jimi Hendrix is that after he was putting out records, he would um, he built Electric Lady, which is down in the village. And he built it so he could just sit in a spot and just play around with sounds until he found something that he wanted. So when I heard that sound, I was like, bro, like, Sonically, I always wanted to do some, some different things, you know what I'm saying? And then Kurt Cobain is just a dude who became this mega dude and made songs just about the most painful shit because... And when I really started the first life when I found out that when N.W.A. album came out, he couldn't stop playing. So I'm thinking, this white boy from Seattle played N.W.A. all day, every day, and didn't listen to anything else when that shit came out. That's what made me lean into his work and be like, okay. It kind of brought me to a space where pain is pain. It sounds different. It might, you know, look different. You got purple hair. Mm -hmm. But if, for you to sit there and listen to Ice Cube back then, when he had black people, like, what is he doing? Because <laughs> that W.A. Yeah, sounded yeah, like, right. dude, the other people cursed in hip hop before. Them. <laughs> But they just did something where you yeah, was they, like, 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 come on, dog. Nah, yeah, they was out with it. They, <laughs> it was just, you know, fuck the police. Yeah, they, they didn't yeah. Come at me. But it's that, just the shit that they was talking about. Even, too. When, even when, when Q got on the solo shit, he was talking about kicking pregnant bitches to the belly and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that. I'm yeah, like, this thing is yeah, crazy. Yeah. So my style, you know, it, it comes from all of the, the musical influences I like. You know what I'm saying? Where I, I definitely felt like, I could pull those things off or the things I like about these people, I would want to hear it in my music too. You know what I'm saying? You get a little mercy, where's that name come from? Where's that name stuff from? Well, before I was Lord have mercy, <laughs> <laughs> I went, when I officially, was officially running around in the uh, open white circuit, which was Thursday Slams, I had another name. I was always going from my life or whatever. So at that time, I was 
feeling like I was moving through my life like a, you know, like a terminator, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, where it doesn't have feelings, but it has to go through emotions. So my name back then was uh, Rugged Raw Moore, M-O-R-E, Morbid Origin Robotic Enigmas. That was my name back then. So that's when they were saying I was Optimus Prime. Yo, the Optimus Prime. <laughs> <Prime. laughs> right. Roll out. That type of shit. So, um, you know, my first introduction to this business <laughs> okay. on a large scale. A group at the time that was popping. A dude uh, was carrying bags for them. They rode him. And they was playing my demo all through the airport, whatever. And this dude was always there. Mm. So he was like, yo, man, I love that dude. He's ill. I want to work with him one day. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Happens to be, long story short, he gets a deal before I get a deal. He happens to have one of the biggest records of the 1990s. If I say his name, I'm doing him a favor. I'm not doing him a favor. But basically, if you go through M-O-R-E, you kind of pick where it's at. He just happened to be the, 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 the lead off of one of the biggest movements in, in young black history, and young black music and, and things of that nature. But, so I'm in a place where I want to change my name now. So I started playing around with certain names and I'm like, okay, I, I need to crush my last name. So it was Lord Have Mercy more, I was still kind of holding on to it. But when dudes found out that I was going to be Lord Have Mercy, they stopped fucking with more, they stopped calling me all that shit. It was just Lord Have Mercy. I'm like, dude, I can't take that name. You can't call yourself that shit. Mm -hmm. I said, the dude with that name would have to be some other shit. Mm -hmm. Dude, you are some other shit, son. You don't rhyme like nobody else. You don't sound like nobody else. Shit, you be talking. You you sound you on top of a mountain around in the dude, you know? So you need that need to be your so I'm like, if I'm gonna take the name, or if I'm gonna take that shit on, I need to make sure that there's a science behind it. Because we also come from a time when you had to have science behind the shit. I'm the old dirty bastard. Because there's no father to my style. You know, yeah, you yeah. Got, your shit got to mean something. Yeah. So when I put the science together with that shit, just looking at how it was and how I always kind of used to be outnumbered, just in terms of I would go places and watch dudes just kind of change themselves around from who they are to being something else. I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna need to do something that touches everything that we are, specifically dealing with us as black dudes in the hood. So you got certain dudes that they might do bad shit, but they're not bad dudes. We got certain good dudes that do bad shit. So what are the, the thing and just, you know, the Jamaican thing is a thing just in terms of spirituality and a couple other things, but the Lord have mercy thing, you have to touch on all the things that are relevant to the human being. So what's relevant to a slave, what's relevant to a slave owner? What's relevant to Sean Bell, what's relevant to the dudes that shot Sean Bell? I, I guarantee you, everybody is gonna be betrayed in their lifetime. So the first time that you was betrayed, Reem know, they will betray you. Yeah. Blessed to the team, man, so you know I'm coming with a betrayal. So betrayal is gonna allow you to start to get the aggression going. You know what I'm saying? So it's the different things in it. I don't do it every record because it's, it, it'll be too much, but now that I've found it to where I can make it, like the song I'm gonna do later for y'all, stick to my, that's a Lord have mercy record. And I also had to kind of create other other parts of landlord is like, you know, Brooklyn regularly on the train. You know what I'm saying? The Lord have mercy is like everything that's in the human experience, you are not gonna be able to. So love. Some people know what it is. Some people don't know what it is. DMX doesn't know what that is. Because of the situation with his moms. I know there's a dude I watch, he's a billionaire. Parents never love him. Parents don't care about him. He a heroin dude. Mm. Both of those dudes find themselves where they were both going to be on that Dr. Drew joint. The fat, the fat dude that was on Dr. Drew a couple of a couple of joints off so happened to be watching him. I'm like, yo, his father's like some oil mogul dude or something. This dude, when you get down to it, his parents never cared about the dude. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, hey, you know, Miss Rivera make him a sandwich. Mm -hmm. and they go about their way and they go, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you look at this dude had problems with his moms. 
and this dude had problems with his parents. This dude's broke and black in the hood. This dude's white and rich as a billionaire. And they both end up basically about to go see the same dude. <laughs> Subscribe now or you killing yourself. Kill him, daddy, kill him. Kill him, daddy, kill him.